Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord, for watching over us and for keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for getting us here safely. We thank you for bringing us all together, those of us who are listening online, those of us who are um, in this studio, and those of us who will be tuning in later. We just ask that you have your way. Have your way in this moment. Have your way with this time that we have set aside to honor you, to bless you, to fellowship, Lord, and to just worship. We ask that you have your way with this word, Lord. Allow us to get what it is you have for us in it. It is in Jesus' my name we pray. Amen. So today's word um, is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version. However, brethren, I could not talk to you as to spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men, men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominates, as to mere infants in the new life, in Christ, unable to talk yet. I fed you with milk, not solid food. If you were not yet strong enough to be ready for it, but even yet you are not strong enough to be ready for it. For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh, under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there are envy and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh? Behaving yourselves after a human standard, like mere unchanged men. Wow. Wow. So Paul was coming at some church folk about misbehaving, basically, in church. Paul was coming at some folk. And um, the first thing that uh, stood out for me was, we can only share on the level that people can handle. You know, one of the things that uh, we establish quickly when I uh, teach the teens is making sure that everybody in the room is safe. And I don't take for granted that they grew up in the church. I don't take for granted that their parents are in leadership. I don't take none of that for granted. I make sure that everybody is safe, that they actually have accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Because it's no point in me teaching you scripture. It's no point in me running down all these biblical principles if you don't even have the foundation, which is Christ. See, because you're not going to get it. I'm going to be talking. It's going to be like Charlie Brown style where the teacher is like, wah, 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 and the kids don't understand Jack because it's going to be a waste of time. You might grab, okay, I understand how that works. I mean, your intellect. Your intellect may be able to grasp something, but the word, it would be very difficult for the word to take root if you don't have the basic foundation of Christ, of knowing who he is, and accepting him as Savior. Then we can build from there. So that's what this is talking about. Paul I had to talk to them and just talk to them on their level, which was a fleshly level, because they weren't spiritual men. They weren't spiritual people. They did not understand at first. Then he says, I fed you with the milk, not solid food. Meaning, I gave you what you could handle. Six-month-old baby is not getting a steak in front of them. They won't know what to do with it. They'll throw it. They'll grab it. And if they try to eat it, they'll choke. So, that's the same with spiritual things. Can't give you the deep things of God. If you haven't even grasped the basics. So, the second thing that stuck out for me in that was, we have to know what people can handle. I have to know you. Like, I can only share with you what you can handle, but I have to know what you can handle before I start sharing. That picks up with conversation. That picks up with, you know, praying. And asking God, show me who this person is. Speak to me. Show me what level they're on. You know, um, like I said, we can only walk and talk on the surface if I know that you can't handle what goes under the surface. 
And then even when we go under the surface and we go deep, I got to know who you are before I could go deep, deep. It's certain things that I just can't share it until I'm sure that you can handle it. It won't make sense. It won't make sense for me to be in a preschool class talking on uh, concepts that I learned in seminary. The preschoolers are not grasping me. And then the third and final thing that lifted out of this text for me came with, with the third verse. For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh under the control of ordinary impulses for as long as there are envying and jealousy and wrangling and frat factions among you. Are you not unspiritual and of the flesh, behaving yourselves after a human standard like mere unchanged men? That means we not acting like Christ. That means we in the church, but we ain't really walking like believers. Oftentimes there is a, um, a concept that's talked about that says church folk and Christians, and there's a difference. And those of us who truly are believers, we get it. We know the difference. See, church folk do show up at church every Sunday, but they don't act like they've been changed by the word. And I'm not talking about people that are still struggling, that are still trying to grow. I'm talking about people that are perfectly happy with being where they are. I'm talking about people that are in that season, that are in church gossiping, that are in church and only seeing people for what they got on, that are not paying attention to the message or to the scripture or to what Pastor Walla has to say, not paying attention to nothing. They're not living no differently. They stand up and shout when the music is playing, but they ain't different. You keeping people excluded from your little circle? Since when is God exclusionary? Everything I read in his word tells me he's inclusive of everyone. So who are you to lock somebody out? Who are you to block somebody's growth? To block somebody's development? Who are you? That's why the world ain't rushing to the church doors, to be quite frank. They're not rushing to the church doors because you look just like them. So why should they get up? Why should somebody get up out their bed early in the morning to come to church to be treated the same way they already treated if they just stay asleep? Why? Why? So, on that note, I will leave a bit of hope. Because there's always time to change, y'all. With relationship comes change. With time spent alone with the Lord comes development. It's just that simple. The more you are truly in his presence, the more you will begin to act like him. The more uncomfortable you will be. We will be. It, is our, it always happens to me. I am more uncomfortable about not doing the right thing when I'm spending more time with God. I cannot get peace in it. I cannot get peace in it. I might vent to folk and folk who are close to me know I can vent, but I cannot mistreat somebody intentionally. I cannot even give them back what they give me because spending time with God changes you. It convicts you. You don't feel right about doing the wrong thing. You want to change. You want to be more like the people you are around. That's true in the flesh, in the natural, and that is most certainly true in the spiritual. You know, um, I t I, we tend to laugh and tease uh, Tina Pelzer, one of my new friends, um, about how girly she is and feminine she is and bougie she is. And I'm going to tell you something. I love every bit of it. It's one of those things that I kind of want to emulate. You know, want to change about myself. It's things that I've admired from a distance ever since I was a kid. I admired girly girls. I just wasn't one. So, the more I'm around her, the more I think it'll rub off. The same thing with Christ. The more I spend time alone with him, the more I talk to him on the random and 
on the fly. Like, yes, definitely designated prayer time, definitely designated devotions, but also just random conversations like you do with your good friends. The people you love, you just randomly call them up. Let me tell you something. Oh, I got to share this. Oh, let me tell you what happened. And you enjoy that fellowship. It's the same way with Christ. Lord, did you, you, I know you saw that. I know you heard that. What I'm supposed to do with that, God? Help me, Lord. That's real. That's real fellowship. So, I'm going to leave us on that note. Those of us who claim the name of Christ, we have got to act like believers. This is Shantae Nicole. And I'm uh, signing off. Let's get back into this music on the Shantae Nicole Show. It's been your scripture break. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Cousin Angel and Marcus Y. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. What's going on? Oh, not too much. We're here. We're yes. live. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and we went live at 6 a.m. Woo, on the dot. Yes. <laughs> the dot. On the dot. Yes. We're okay. having so. our challenges, but we're back. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, life is not without its challenges, but praise God. <laughs> So, it's been so much going on. Well, where would you like to begin? Well, I don't, the first story that keeps popping into my head, mm -hmm. and I didn't get a chance to talk this over with you all. Uh-oh, what? A little boy got suspended. Uh, I saw that. For the part in his head. That is ridiculous. He was an honor student. <laughs> Haircut couldn't have been more neat. Right. Yeah, One his barber was part. sharp. His, his barber, barber was, was on sharp. point. You saw his barber was sharp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Haircut was on point. Yep. It was one part. One little swerve in the top. Yep. That's it. It was a half a Nike swoop. Mm-hmm. It was a half a swoop. And he got suspended. And what was the reason, though? What did they say the reason was? I, I just believe it. So, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say. No, because we didn't hear from you. We want to hear from you. Everybody wants to hear from you. Well, I'm awake this week. Amen. I need to know. I mean, regardless of what they said mm -hmm. was the reason, because mm -hmm. trust me, they had a reason. Mm -hmm. They had a reason. Oh, his blackness. Yes. He was being aggressive with his yes, part. That's, that's a pretty, part aggression. That's a pretty aggressive <laughs> hairstyle. A new hashtag, part aggression. Oh, Lord. That's a point in we need some pointing. Yeah, we need some pointing. We need some unnecessary pointing. Ah, 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 ah. He said unnecessary pointing. <laughs> they know. Uh, they know. Hey. All for you. I got my go see back. Ah. The union. Ah. Look, we even got a guest in the back with Daddy us getting it in. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Look at the pearly white. <laughs> we are live in the studio with Ron Willerford. Yes. What's up, Ron? Hey, good morning, everybody. How you doing today? Good, good. So glad you could join us today. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. And um, so for those of you who don't know, Ron Willerford is the man with the financial plan to help you into your future. Okay, and your present. So this is the perfect time to talk to Ron because we in the middle of income tax season. Yes. Yeah, like you're able to file as early as January, which I learned once I got introduced to Ron. <laughs> <laughs> he began to do my taxes. Right. He was like, no, you get your money in January. You ain't going to wait till April. And guess what? <laughs> That's there. when I get it. <laughs> Another count. <laughs> yes. And so, but, you know, with that being said, a lot of people use their income tax money to, you know, Flat splurge, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to go on vacation, to have play money. And we got to learn how to start being wise. And especially with this new political climate, Again, black community, it's time for us to be self-contained once again, and we should, you know, always aspire to be in that way. And so, Ron, we want to talk to you today a little bit about some of the ways in which people can 
have a little play money, but still do some of the stuff they need to do. Like, not spend it all on catching up on bills. Like, to be honest, that's what I always use mine for. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, but to be able to do a little of, of all three. Catching up on some bills, um, having some play money. However, having something put away for, like, college or, you know, whatever else things that come about yeah, in your emergency fund. Yeah. Right. Well, I think the biggest thing is with the tax refund, you shouldn't get a big refund, to be mm -hmm. honest. Uh, what you're doing, you're giving Uncle Sam a loan for the year, and then you get a big refund and go spend it. What you should do is adjust your withholding during the year so you have more in your paycheck. Mm -hmm. And that way you can live a little bit better during the year. If you get less of an amount, that's fine. Um, but what I recommend is when you get the refund, look somewhere to, to invest it. So at least once a year you have some money that you can put away into some type of fund. Mm. And that's the best way that I can tell folks. Okay, yes, yes, yes. And so I hope you all enjoyed Dawkins and Dawkins. Yes, we did. That was our featured artist for the week. And uh, I think they've done a good job of reaching the urban community I believe so. <laughs> at least they make the music that reach us mm -hmm. and uh speaking of the urban community we got financial planner mr ron wilford in the building mm. and not that he only services the urban community however we appreciate you seeing the importance on sharing uh financial literacy with the urban community so yeah i, I think we've got a uh lot to learn in our community as far as uh, economics and finances. Um, we got to learn to live within our means and sometimes we lower our means in order to reach any financial goal. That's right. You, know, you can't right. live for today all the time. Right. You know, you, gotta, you, gotta, you have to plan for the future. Each yeah. one, <laughs> each, each exactly. one, teach one. Exactly. You know? You know, that, that's a good philosophy. You know, I'm involved in the financial ministry at my church and we do a, an, an exceptional job. And what church is that? Excuse me, Mr. Wilford. What church is that? Tab, e Tabernacle. Exactly. e Tabernacle Baptist Church. Yeah, our, our financial ministry at the TAB, we try to really get that information out there Amen. to That's anyone that, that wants to um, get better with their finances. Because there's some religious connotations to financial planning called good stewardship mm -hmm. but we gonna get back into this music we're gonna come back to the conversation because mr williford is still in the building Thank you, and uh we want to chat a little bit more before the uh praise mix comes up the 9 30 mix that's where we get it in and just trust me praise got it hot 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 this oh, week y'all he's back out of the <laughs> hospital and uh, he did a little something for us Ooh, i can't wait yes so marcus why what's up next Coming up next, we got Lisa McClendon. Ooh. Million dollars. Yes. yes. If I had a million dollars. Several million myself. That don't sound good. <laughs> yes. If I had a million dollars, it could never be enough to repay Christ for what he's done for us. Wow. I like Amen. that. Yeah. yeah. I might make that my theme song. <laughs> Amen. <got> a million. <laughs> Let's do it. Pure Scopers, we are live in the studio with Ron Williford. I was looking if I don't get five, six thousand and a refund, you think you fail. But if you do the math, if you take five thousand multiplied by fifty two weeks, that's a hundred dollars a week you can have in your pocket and also invest it somewhere else, get some growth in the marketplace and allow yourself to be financially free. And that's the best advice I can give people. Mm. That's awesome. Financial freedom. <laughs> Right, I look forward to living in the days. <laughs> but then you also got to understand that, you know, we talk about financial freedom, there's also the struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not easy, it's it's changing mindsets and just changing the way you look and you view things. And the thing that really helped me not to have to have was when I worked at a clothing manufacturer. And I think I told this story on air before, but uh, I worked for a, a Levi company. And we made Levi jeans, and at the time, I uh, lived in California, and the Levi jeans we sold, they were like the basic ones, and they were $30 a pair. But I would see the paperwork that showed how much it cost us to make them, and it cost us 50 cents right. <laughs> to make a pair of $30 jeans. So then from that point on, I've never paid 
at a full price for anything. Because I was like, please, they only spun $2 to make it, 50 cents to make it. It's called like, profits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, like, when they came out with the three and $400 jeans, oh, I yeah. could never, like, understand it. Because I'm like, first of all, it's just a pair of dungarees. Exactly. Like, I'm yeah, taking way right, back. Yeah, yeah. It's a pair of dungarees. Mm -hmm. okay. Where did you pull that from? Dungarees. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> exactly. I was told they were dungarees. <laughs> Changed the jeans and made them a hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I was like, but it's still only costing you fifty cents to make the same hundred dollar jeans. So you cannot get a hundred dollars from me for a pair of fifty cent jeans. Right. Exactly. And I, I mean that's that's where you look and you see you do the investigation. Mm -hmm. Buy a pair of Nikes. Realistically, they probably cost a dollar to make, but we'll go stand in line and buy a pair of Air Jordans. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't improve your game at all. <laughs> I can't that gentleman's name. Beast Mode. Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. His name, I hear it all the time. And then just now, only thing I think of was his nickname. But the reason why I'm bringing him up is he has earned almost, if not over, $50 million right. in the NFL and has his funding. And so they were like... You know, maybe we should learn something from Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> he don't talk to media, but for whatever reason, he the way he's been living, he hasn't spun any of his NFL earnings thus far. So what do you think about somebody like that? That's excellent. He lives on what he needs. I mean, after you buy, if you buy too many Bentleys, <laughs> you know, you go broke. Right, you know, exactly. You buy eight cars, you can only drive one at a time. So he lives his life pretty simple. Right. And I think that's what you do. You, you live beneath your, your needs. Mm -hmm. You only need certain things right. to, to survive. So that's a beautiful thing. Right. You know, and he's looking for the future. Just Most, to, if I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but mm -hmm. if I could, I've also heard Marshawn Lynch say in the interviews that he does that on purpose because he's more interested in doing stuff in the community as of right now. Right, because Ron is hanging out with us for a while, so we're going to get back into uh, the featured artist music of Dawkins and Dawkins. Have you been able to listen to any of it, uh, Ron? I'm patting my foot right now. Amen, <laughs> amen. So, Marcus, <laughs> what? Three, two. That was Dawkins and Dawkins, and uh, yes, they are a fire. I'm loving their music. It's so smooth. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are back. We are back. We are back. This is Shantae Nicole, and I'm back with Cousin Angel. Yes. Marcus Y. And Ron Williford is in the building <laughs> trying to oh, share. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out, world. He's trying to share with us how we're supposed to be doing our mizzen. Mm. Um, it was just a job at first, but I found that people weren't really educated about finances, particularly in, in our community. Right. So what happened was. Uh, I became successful just by teaching people. Mm -hmm. And through that, I evolved, became licensed to do investments. And just the education piece, I decided that, you know, people are, people in general need to be educated. Right. You know, they're buying life insurance, not even knowing the need. I've got a policy that's going to burn, not understanding that you can help your family with life insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting back to life insurance, um, the funny thing is um, a lot of people get away or they're afraid of life insurance. And they're afraid in the sense of as if by getting a policy, they're hastening their death. And you know what I mean? Like, oh, we're planning for my demise. Like, no, I'm not going to help plan for that. Or, you know, I guess these TV movies get in your head and you think somebody's going to kill you for the policy. Oh, some of that is real. Yeah, some of that is real. However... You know, given that you belong to a family of people that really love you, <laughs> like, you know, at least the children that you have and the, the spouse that you have, you should be able to trust that they're not going to kill you for this 100000 or 200 or whatever the policy is. How do you help ease people past their fears and get them focused on really taking that responsibility of looking out for their family because it's inevitable none of us get out of life alive like we will mm -hmm. all eventually leave the planet and somebody will be left behind to not just bury us but to go on so how do you help get around that fear yeah. <clears throat> the first thing i tell folks is that life insurance isn't for you it's for your family mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me we do some um, life insurance planning 
I mean, if you take your lifetime, let's say we we'll use the example of fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Let's say you're age thirty five and plan to work for another thirty years. Multiply that thirty by the fifty. That means right now your value to your family is one point five million. Mm-hmm. So that's what you need is. It's called the human life value. You need one point five million if you weren't here tomorrow to replace you economically. Mm-hmm. That's what you're worth to your family. Wow. So you know, when I said to folks, I only want ten thousand. Yeah, the 10000 will bury you, but how old is Johnny going to go to college? Mm-hmm. He's 10 years old now. He's got eight years. God forbid something happens to you within that eight-year period. How old is Johnny going to go to college or exactly. have a life? Exactly. So you got to replace you. you got to replace income. So when you start talking a million-dollar policy, it's nothing. Right. You look at your lifetime, and that's right. what a, a lot of people don't understand. Right. They just think the life insurance is just there for the funeral. Mm. We live for the funeral. How about you leave something <laughs> that you live for your family? Exactly, and there's a lot of other cultures that take that into consideration and they leave something for their family to get on with. Right. You know, so that their kids can still go to college and so that, you know, their wives are not working for jobs while the kids are raising themselves because now you know, or their husband's not working for jobs because now the kids have absent one parent in income and, you know, this is the only way to survive. So yes, now yes. tell the survive. world, that was uh, Molly Music and Lecrae. Tell the world everywhere I go. That's right. Tell them all about Christ and that I'm, I'm brand new. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we were sitting here getting some, it's not brand new information, but it's new to you. If you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> Uh, from none other than Mr. Ron Williford, the financial planner. As I like to say, he is the man with a financial plan to help you. So, anyway, Ron, we enjoyed your time here with us. Thank you, I appreciate it. We are coming up on our DJ Praise Mix. Uh And uh, that's when we get it in. All right, now. And Praise is out of the hospital. Yes. Yes, we looking forward to that. (laughs) And How you guys doing? Uh, Guess who's back? <laughs> <laughs> praise is back. Yes. Praise is back. Praise is back. <laughs> Amen. Glad about the hospital. You don't know how to get up here. Yes. <laughs> we can tell. So, can tell. Ron, so, Ron, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you, how they can access you, and you can give them more one-on-one, uh, you know, service to kind of help oh, yeah. them along. When they need to get with DJ Praise. No, know, Rick Praise. Stuff. I'm talking to Ron. The financial okay. planner. We want him to give out his information. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we about to get into this mix. Come on, praise. We've been waiting for this. We know you itching know for you it. You know. You know. DJ MC a mic too early. You know we get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So I'm ready. Amen. Well, introduce that hot mix, because like I told you, I got a preview this week, and I was like, yes, does this fire? Yeah, they, they let me loose, and I just went and lost it. You know, it's okay. the time, everybody, so you better turn them radios up. And before I introduce this mix, you better vote, people. That's all I can tell you. You better right, vote. Let's go, let's get it in. DJ <laughs> Praise style. This is the DJ Praise mix. This is Shantae Nicole. Cousin Angel. And, and Ron Technical difficulty. Let's get it. Alright. Alright, praise we holler. Alright, praise we out, man. Alright. Alright, big guy, take it easy. Okay. Alright, right. praise. I am. Some icy I hot on that hip, baby. It's <laughs> good doing Marcus Mine. She said, tell us something about yourself. Praise said, well, I'm uh I'm located out of uh <laughs> I like that. That was so great.